everyone. Paul Keith Davis here, uh, filming a uh, video blog from our home in Oregon. Uh, we've not been able to get to uh, Alabama to film one from our studio, so we apologize uh, for the quality. It's actually I'm just filming this on my iPad, and we'll be sending it to Caleb to upload it to our YouTube channel and also to the Facebook page. But uh, it's been a couple of weeks uh, since uh, we've communicated with you. Obviously, a lot's going on, and we've had numerous people wanting to know what uh, what our position is on all the activities and things that are taking place. And uh, and I thought I would share that with you. Actually, I've kind of touched on it in a few blogs before. And uh, as I have prayed, as so many other people have prayed about the coronavirus and all that's going on. I really felt like the Lord told me he's already given me my, my answer. And the real answer is the Lord has given us authority. I do believe this is a testing time. I believe that our hearts are being tested. Are we going to live in faith or fear? I do believe that's taking place right now. Our response to all that's taking place is very important. And while many of us are praying, you know, Lord, do something about the coronavirus, I kind of think the Lord is saying to us, do something about the coronavirus. <laughs> He's putting authority in our mouth. He's giving us authority to control the heavens. And what is established in the heavens will be manifested on the earth. Uh, at the end of 2019 and moving into the early part of 2020, the Lord gave me a pretty significant experience. I was speaking in a church on January the 12th and there was a veil of resistance that was in the meeting. The Lord told me it was going to be there before we got there and certainly when we got to the service there it was. This veil of opposition that the enemy had released uh, against the service and the Lord told me very clearly do not even attempt to bring the message I had until I dealt with this veil of uh, of darkness that was in the room and he gave me very clearly a passage from Isaiah chapter 41 beginning at verse 10 it says do not fear for I am with you <laughs> do not fear for I am with you I'm gonna say it again do not fear for I am we belong to the king of kings he's on his throne he is in heaven he rules there is power in the blood. Uh, Psalm 91, I'm, I'm sure, is everyone's declaration right now. And well, it should be. The blood of Jesus Christ speaks louder than everything else on planet Earth. And those of us that are moving into the end of the age that are going to be used extensively to bring the kingdom on the earth, to bring in the greatest harvest, to manifest the kingdom, to manifest the kingdom, that is the very works that Jesus did, we're not going to be able to live in fear. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not look anxiously about, for I am your God. And I will uphold you. I, I will save you, and I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's a, that's a declaration. That's not just a promise. It's our declaration. It's a word that's being put in our mouth, and we declare it and believe it. And as I have said in previous blogs, what we say with our mouth must be a reflection of what we believe in our heart. It must be first established in our own heart by revelation. Authority comes by revelation. You know, the apostle Peter, Jesus said, whom do you say that I am? And all the other responses came forward. Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He had a revelation of who he was. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my father revealed it. And upon this rock, what? The revelation of Jesus Christ, I will build my kingdom. Revelation equates to authority. You have authority to the measure that you have revelation. Then he turned right around and gives Peter the keys of the kingdom. That's a great deal of authority because he had a revelation. So we must have a revelation today. If we're going to deal, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. We, we probably need to get a little more acclimated dealing with crisis and and how we're going to respond and i think churches all over america and all over the world for that matter should begin to teach the people how we respond in times of crisis because it's going to be that way until the end of the age am i prophesying doom and gloom no i'm just telling you what the bible says 
that the end of the age is characterized by darkness and difficulties and earthquakes and perils and pestilence. That's what the Bible clearly predicts. So let's deal with it. That's my thing, you know. It's in the Word. Let's deal with it. Let's don't be afraid to address the difficult topics. Let me move on quickly. I don't want this to be too long. But I'm praying you have a revelation, that you have a revelation, a revelation of the blood, a revelation of the Word. And out of that revelation, you speak and you declare and you prophesy and you begin to forge your own future from the unseen realm. But then the main, you know, all the way through Revelation, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 41, beginning of verse 10, 11, 12, 13, all the verses of how the Lord begins to deal with our enemies. Well, the coronavirus is our enemy. It's not our friend. So we're going to deal with it. We're going to begin to prophesy. But here is the main thing. What happened for me on January 12th when I was in this service, the Lord said, get up and he said, I'm going to make you a new sharp threshing sledge with double edges. And I want you to thresh the mountains of opposition and pulverize them and make the hills like chafe. That's Isaiah chapter 41, verse 15. That is our decree. That's my word for you. That's the word the Lord gave me before I had ever heard of the coronavirus. <laughs> He said, I'm going to make you. He's making the remnant. I came back to that church the very next Sunday. And the Lord, while during worship, the Lord said, sit down right now and prophesy. And I typed it up and sent it out. Prophesy, the Lord said, that I am making the remnant of my people like a new threshing sledge with double edges with sharp teeth. And you are called to pulverize and to thresh the mountains of opposition, whatever they may be, whether it be pestilence, the religious spirit, the controlling spirit, whatever all the issue, the spirit of Antichrist was specifically given to me that day. So that's my word. That's what I can stand on. This is what the Lord gave me before we ever had this crisis. Then, of course, at the end of 2019, moving into 2020, Jeremiah chapter 1 was emphasized. And I've kind of mentioned this in various places that we have been. In fact, we were up in uh, Kelowna, Canada back in February and had the privilege of being a part of a very important meeting, I believe, called Battle for Canada. About 15, 1,600 people gathered contending for the destiny of Canada. And I shared this very message that God is making us. We are the weapon. We are the tool. He's expecting us to deal with the heavens. He's expecting us to deal with these things. The church, the remnant of God's people, the people that are kingdom-minded are going to be the ones that deal with these crises. And of course, Jeremiah chapter one, you know the passage very clearly. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth and filled my mouth with his word. That's what he's doing right now. There is a revelatory encounter. There is a exchange. There is a confrontation. The Lord is, is visiting with us and he's putting a word in our mouth. And as Jeremiah was told, that word is to uproot, tear down and overthrow, but also plant and build. That means we have to change something. There is a change removing the religious structures and planting the kingdom, removing the, the curses that have been released by the occult and by the diviners and by the enemy, such as the coronavirus and many other things, and replacing it with something that comes from the kingdom. And so I believe we as the remnant, those of you that hear this message, your, your admonition, I believe is to recognize that you have some authority. Not because we deserve it, but because the Lord has given us a revelation of who he is and he's put his authority on us. I've given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. He's given us authority to begin to speak against all of these crises that are coming against us so that we can bring in the harvest. And I pray that this revelation is being given to you. And finally, the other passage, and all three of these are related. All three of these basically are saying the same thing, but Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 16 Behold, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. God has put a word in our mouth, but then he releases the anointing to overshadow us so that the word we speak comes out of an atmosphere of the anointing. In that situation, those words have life and spirit. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words he spoke were life and spirit. And so when our word, that word he puts in our mouth, a word that's in agreement with heaven, the word that's in alignment with God comes out of our mouth. It is captured. It is galvanized by life and spirit. And it goes forth and it goes on to say in Isaiah 51, 16, 
I have put my word in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand to establish the heavens, to found the earth, and to say to Zion, you are my people. There you have it. The remnant of God's people are being, are, they are being made into a threshing sledge. They are the threshing sledge to pulverize these mountains of opposition. You are the messenger of God into whom he's putting a word that you will prophesy that uproots and tears down and destroys the plots and schemes and devices of the enemy and then begins to plant and build the very revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the one to whom he's going to put a word and then cover you with the anointing so that word establishes something in the heavens. We have to replace the fear that's over our nation right now with something else, with faith, with, with a desperation for God. I'm, we're prophesying that, that the fear would be removed, that the fear would be out of the atmosphere. It certainly has no place in the church. <laughs> there is no place for fear in the church. I'm sorry if people are anxious and, and what have you. There is just no fear in the kingdom of God, period. I don't believe in being careless. We're not being careless and presumptuous. I have a little bottle of thieves in my pocket, <laughs> which if you don't know what that is, it's an essential oil that's supposed to kill germs and whatever. So I'll be, you know, I, I do that, but I'm still going about my daily work. I'm going to work out every day. I'm going to the grocery store. We, uh, you know, ordered out Thai last night from our favorite Thai restaurant to let those people know we love them, we support them. We're not going to abandon them. You know, we're doing all that we can do. Um, you know, I, I got to be honest, just my perspective, I, I, uh, I think it's kind of good that, you know, maybe some people are still meeting. I'm not saying violate the laws or any of those things, but, but you know what? I like the courage that some people have had, you know, I'm going to still meet. What's the best, where the best place for the people of God to be is in, uh, in, in the place with other believers. That's my belief. I'm not saying violate curfews or any of the restrictions or whatever. I, I get all that, but I don't think we need to change it. We can look for new opportunities to get the word of God to people and new new methods. This is a new day. We've been saying that all along. This is a new day. We are going to be required to come up with new ways of getting things out, but this is a time for courage. This is a time for boldness. This is a time for leadership, the church, the remnant of God's people. When I say the church, I'm talking about the real ecclesia, those that are called out, those that are anointed with the Holy Spirit, begin to take a position of leadership and, and delegate faith and articulate faith and begin to believe that this is the last days. We're moving into the last days. Let's get ready for it. Let's get ready for it. It's not going to get any different over the years. We're going to have one thing after another we're going to have to confront, whether it be storms and natural disasters. We have to prophesy against them and believe that the Lord is giving us the authority. He's empowering us. He's empowering us. I'm going to do another blog. I'm going to talk about Israel. When they came out of Egypt, you know, the Lord did everything for them up until the point of Mount Sinai. But when they had to cross over, it required that they take up a sword and fight. They had to be militant. They had to be proactive. They had to get their hands dirty, if you will. And that's where we are. We are the ones the Lord is trusting to begin to release the revelation of the kingdom. Well, anyway, I hope this has helped you. <clears throat> I don't mean for this to be very long. I have so much I'd like to say. But uh, for the sake of brevity, I will just say that and do another one in the next couple of days. Thank you for all of you that help us. You know, we're, um, the meetings that we have had have been canceled, uh, as, so, as so many others. So thank you for those of you that do help us during this time. But just have courage. Lord, I pray that you would release an anointing to every one of the people that watch this blog, an anointing for revelation of who you are. And with that revelation comes the delegation of authority, and that your people with boldness and courage would stand up and prophesy life that we would prophesy the shift of the heavens, that you would put a word in our mouth and cover us with the shadow of your hand so that we can change the heavens. We can shift the heavens and begin to release a manifestation of your kingdom. Grant that, Lord, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.